you're right or you're a potter. It's like, I mean, I'm one person. I kind of, you know, do I have to pick them apart in that way? edge of a bus garage, a um, really unglamorous place. And this used to be, this whole building used to be um, a gun factory. When I first came in, it, there were, there was a zinc lined room um, full of shot. You know, there were big stacks of boxes with danger, explosives written on it. It had this extraordinary history. Uh, and it was basically a big shed. And I worked with two great friends of mine who DSDHA, the architects, Deborah Saunton and David Hills, to, to kind of make this overlapping spaces, you know, a space to make pots, a space to, to, I mean, there's books everywhere, but a space to particularly have books, and a space to kind of look at objects and bring installations together. It is a very good functional studio to work in, sort of testing space. This is um, pretty much the most important place in my life and it's where I actually make pots. And it's really simple, it's kind of monastically simple. Um, out there is the West Norwood bus garage, but in here, it's really calm. And, and this is my wheel, electric wheel, my old bench that I've had for 40 years of my life, still really uncomfortable. And this is it. Clay, it's just completely lyrical stuff. It just goes on forever. You know, you have it in your hands and it's, its plasticity is extraordinary. Yesterday I was making these small bowls which I'll be turning later on. They're just uh, drying now, so in the next hour or two I'll be able to, to trim these. And these very thin cylinders as well, which will go into this installation for Paris, this, this group of work that I'm working on at the moment. And you can see that the, it's all very basic, you know, water, clay, a few tools, music, and, um, and a dog in the corner. Down here is fire. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this is sort of critical <laughs> stuff. So this is proper alchemy. You know, this is, these are the kilns. This is my gas kiln here. Imagine it, sort of real sort of tornado of, of flame in here. And then all the electric kilns too. And you know, I mean, having done this for, for, for decades, it's, things still go wrong. You know, they really do. Um, you can't, you can control so much, but you can't control everything. And that's what makes it incredibly interesting. So, you know, here we are, you know, there's glaze tests, you know, banks and banks over here of glaze tests, you know, black glazes um, and, and deep sort of um, almost Corten steel-like colours, you know, and behind you there are all these oxides, you know, everything's toxic, <laughs> you know, everything's vented and terribly careful, but the heart of it is this strange moment where you have a very, very fragile object, you know, made out of something, sort of paper-thin clay, and you put it in a kiln, and you make it go up to 1300 degrees centigrade. You know, you test it, you, you test these materials out in the flame and what happens is something extraordinary happens. This, this fragile material becomes this translucent, beautiful, I hope, <laughs> object at the end of it. But it can always go wrong. You know, and that's, that's, that's the heart of it. It can always go wrong. It can always break. And that's, that's kind of beautiful sort of truth at the heart of all this stuff. What's so fascinating about that is it takes you into this sort of territory of real life, of things aging and, and, and being damaged and broken, which is what happens to all of us, you know, um, and it happens to the things around us, but it happens to us as well. And so what, what, what it takes you to is, is how, do you, how do you register and mark experiences? How do you register and mark loss? This exhibition in the Musée Camondo happened uh, in an extraordinary way. I mean, I've, I've known this house for a long, long time. 
um, and then the invitation happened to, 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 to create something for this space. So it's an extraordinary house to begin with. I mean, it's, a, it's in this Rue de Monceau, this beautiful street. Um, and it's the street where my own family, the Fris my Jewish ancestors, the Frisi ancestors lived just further up the street. So it's an extraordinarily sort of powerful, historic place for me. The studio is full of things I've been working on for this exhibition in Paris. And what you'll see is, is, is fracture. Here, for instance, is a small porcelain bowl, similar to the ones I've been throwing yesterday. And it's full of, it's full of shards. It's full of broken pieces of, of, of porcelain. You know, the hammer gets used here in the studio quite a lot. And then it's held in a vitrine. It's held in a kind of, in, you know, inner space. And this is going to go in, into, the, into the kitchens um, of, the, of the Musée Camondo. It's going to go into this extraordinary, pristine space. This table will go in the entrance hall of the Musée Camondo. And then it's a, sort of, it's a sort of map of the project. And then from there, some of these vitrines are, are going to be in different places. You can see that quite a lot of them are very small. These aren't grand things that I'm working on. This, the, these are often very intimate and fragile sort of moments that I'm trying, trying to hold together. I mean, porcelain, fragile. And you'll see here sort of objects that we're beginning to, I'm, I'm beginning to work with porcelain and lead and oak, this very beautiful oak, which has this beautiful texture and, and quality to it. And what I'm doing is over the oak, putting gold, so you can see the layers and the history there, and then beginning to sort of stack these pieces of porcelain and the lead and the gold. And, and what I'm trying to do is to make these sort of powerful, small um, places which talk about how the family lived in the house, that they were here, they, this, this is the house they lived in and grew up in and, and, and made sense of. And then there's a desk. Writing happens too. I hadn't intended to write a book, but in that lockdown um, a year ago, I was in this studio here couldn't get to Paris and found myself walking around the studio talking to Moïse de Camondo, this collector, and started to write letters. And the letters built. They became one letter and then several letters to him. And then by, by midsummer, suddenly I'd, I'd written 60, 60 letters to him about, about memory and family and food. And, and loss and about myself and about all kinds of things. And so it, there was no plan. Dear friend, I'm making an archive of your archive. I find inventories, carbon copies, auction catalogues, receipts and invoices, memoranda, newspaper announcements, cards of condolence, seating plans and menus, photographs of artworks, photographs of the family, each document is on a different kind of paper. Each has a different weight and texture and scent. I find all these letters. I find manifests for cargo, manifests for people as cargo. I find the manifests for your daughter, for your son-in-law, for their children. I find this difficult. And that's pretty much, you know, the script for what I'm trying to, trying to do here. So this is actually a really good example, you know, of, of <laughs> what we're on about. Because this is a, a Meissen plate from about 1760, and it was destroyed in the bombing of Dresden. And the family got it back, it was restituted after the, in the 1980s, um, in fragments. And I bought the fragments. And we've been doing Kintsugi with um, a very remarkable Japanese artist, um, repairing it. Uh, but it's not repair, because you can't repair it, you can't make it something it's, you know, you can't bring it back to this uh, perfect condition. It's, it's, it's had that history, and, and that history sort of held in one object.
that's, that's really what we're trying to do here.